So I thought we'd paint a nice poppy. All right, and we're going to be using Media Fluid Acrylics. See these? And I use Media Fluid Acrylics a little bit differently than a lot of artists that you're familiar with. And I'm good with that. I use them more like a watercolor. And the advantage of using Media Fluid Acrylic as opposed to watercolor is that it's a little bit more forgiving. You can go in there with some lights and you can make corrections a little bit easier. It's a really fun media to, wor to work with. Um, it's highly, highly pigmented uh, and it's got a, it's a fluid acrylic. So it's really loosey goosey. So we're gonna get started and the video will be up. Um, well, I don't know how long the video will be up for, as long as they let me keep it up. So it'll be up for a while. I So let's get started. All right. I know I haven't figured out how to do this without flipping you around, but um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip you around and adjust the camera. Okay. Here we go. So I'm right side up. I do love these cameras. There's a quirk that I'm trying to work out so I don't have to flip around like this. All right. And we're going to move you back just a little tiny bit. There we go. Okay. Yes, and there is a shadow in it. It wasn't when I did my test run. I'm not quite sure. Let me make a few more adjustments here. Let's try to get out of the shadow. There. All right. over and you know I did a test run this morning and it didn't do this so why it's doing it now I'm not really sure let's see I do need to go there All right. Oh, I have an idea. Here we go. Now it's not interfering with the poppy. That's the most important thing to me. Okay. So, we are going to get started. I am using Water Lily and Kalala brushes by Dynasty. K A L E L and Water Lily. Okay. Be using a black gold liner. All this stuff is available on my website. The one thing about the, using this technique, hi Janet, how are you dear? And Julia, good morning from sunny Colorado. The one thing about using this kind of technique, I, you have to remember is that wherever the water is, the color is going to go to. Okay, I'm painting on watercolor paper. This is a block. Okay, it's called a block. Um, good, Janet. Thank you. Um, it's a block and it's watercolor paper. It's 140 pound. I don't have to tape it down and it won't buckle. So I'm going to get in and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put down some water. The one color that I really love to paint with poppies is blue. I just think they're just gorgeous together. The bright, bright red, and 
I use a bright blue, and I'm going to be using cyan blue. Okay. All right. And I wet my brush, side load it. Okay, side loading, it's still a little controlling. Here we go. And we're going to just wet that. I'm going to go right over the stem. The stem's green. And green is made of blue and yellow. Okay. And I'm going to wet this down. And I have blue in my brush. Remember what I said, wherever the water goes, the color goes. All right, and we're just going to do a molten -y type of background. It's going to have some nice blue color in it. Watercolor paper we're working with here. I have this on a block, it's called. You can get it at, I don't sell blocks of watercolor paper. You can get it at your local store. Uh, Michael's used to sell it. I think they probably still do. They're ever changing. And if some of the blue goes into the back petal like it just did there, I'm not going to worry too, too much about it. All right, it'll just fall into the, to the background. There we go. I'm going to turn this around. Go in here, lift it so that it's not real there, so it doesn't have a nice, we don't want it to have a really sharp edge there. And that's nice. Okay. And I'm gonna, this background is soaked. All right, it's really soaked. Hello, Carolyn Swayze. And I am gonna be emailing you with the, with the project for White Mountain. And yes, I'll be teaching a great project in May. You can contact Carolyn for White Mountain. I'll also be teaching a great project, Sweet Bluebird. I'm teaching on, let's see, Creative Innovations. I didn't want to say the wrong one. I only belong to two groups that I do, and I didn't want to confuse them. There we go. And Maggie, Maggie Bolger, watching from Indiana. How are you, Maggie? All right, so there is a great background. And yes, it's varied. And you can go into areas with this being this wet that are a little bit more intense and you don't want to over brush it. You want to let the water do its thing and just float it around. Here we go. Now I am going to, which I don't always do, I usually work in acrylic from light, from middle value and I go back and forth between middle value and light and dark and gradually build it. We are, and it doesn't mean that I'm not going to get light again, but what it does mean, what I am going to tell you is that we are going to start with some light color just because that's what I want to do. All right. I thought about it this morning and I, um, we're building this together. I haven't done this one yet. This is not um, a repeat. I am going to dry it. The one thing you need to know is that it is an acrylic. So once I dry it, all right, I'm going to lift this up a little bit so that you can see easily see the whole thing. And yes, I'm using one of these craft tools. My dear friend Linda consistently pushed me to do this because she said, you know, we can't hear a word you're saying over those dryers that you use. 
So I did it. I broke down and bought one of these, and it's a great little tool. It, what is it? It's called a heated craft tool. Get it on Amazon. Um, okay, we're going to raise this up so you can see the whole thing. Here we go. Nope, oh, you still can't see the whole thing. I need some lessons in camera. And then we'll bring it down. There, yeah, now you can see the whole thing. Okay, so this right here is the center of the poppy. Okay, I know it's off center, but I did that on purpose. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some yellow. Oh, there we go. I'm going to bring in some yellow and we're going to go like this. I put the water down first and then I'm going to put in some yellow. Okay. There we go. Now, unlike in watercolor, um, even though these are really watercolor techniques, I don't have to hold on to the white of my paper because I'm going to put in white paint. Okay, and I'm going to soften that out. Softening out is a big thing for me. I like everything to have smooth transitions of color. Okay, now the next color I'm going to use, remember what I said in the beginning, Birdie Hicks. Good morning. Um, the next uh, thing I want, to re want you to remember, I'm going to tell you this a hundred times during this demonstration. The water is going to flow wherever this uh, the paint the pigment is going to flow wherever there's water okay and you want to keep that in mind all right so the next thing that we're going to put out is going to be vermilion all right and i'm going to give you some information and some of it's going to be like you're going to say what did she say and that's all right all right uh I, I like to try to give you a little theory as we move along, and sometimes you don't want to hear it, and that's okay. Just ignore it if you don't want to hear it. I think some of you might like it and enjoy it, and that's a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to tell you. All right, so we're going to bring in orange next, and we're going to bring this in from the outside edge towards the center. Okay, and if I put in, and yes, this edge right here is what we call a hard edge, all right? So I'm going to bring that in, and wherever the water is, the pigment is going to flow, and you need to remember that. And when I do florals, I always paint towards the growth. This is the center of the flower. We're going to soften into the center and we're going to paint our strokes towards the center of the flower. There we go. Alrighty. I'm trying to think. February 4th. We're painting a sweet bluebird on Creative Innovations in Painting. That's Tuesday, that's a Tuesday night. And it's a very similar technique. And the thing about this technique is you can just sit back and like let it flow. And it's just going to be lovely. And it's a little more relaxing. It's a looser way of painting. All right. Uh, it's a little brighter than I wanted it to be at this stage, and that's all right. I'm just going to add some water to it, pull it towards the center. There we go. Soften it out. And believe it or not, I'm doing one petal at a time. There we go. This area up here is a little bit too light, so it's already dry. I'm going to go in again with some water. 
and some pink. This is vermilion, and this is fluid acrylics, okay? I don't have to wet the paint down. The paint's already wet down, and it's more than just wet down. It's a highly pigmented paint. There we go. See? If you don't nail it the first time around, you just go again. All right. Soften these edges out. The inside of this petal has soft transitions of pigment. All right. And yes, that's the thing about painting that we really want to remember is we just, you can't give up. You got to keep going. There we go. And I'm going to pull that towards the growth. Towards the growth. And it's got some nice, nice texture going on there. Soften this out right in here. The thing about fluid acrylics is that they do have a little bit stronger open time because of the pigments that are used in them. So you can move it around a little bit longer. Once you dry it, it's an acrylic. It's not a watercolor. Once you dry it, it's done. All righty. It's all done. It's not going to move. That pigment is not going to move. In watercolor, you can dry it and come back five months later and you can move that pigment. You cannot do that with watercolor, with um, fluid acrylics. Okay, so the we're going to go on to the next la layer. All right. And the next layer is going to have... Um, can I do that? Yeah, I can do that. We're going to start up here. So we're going to, um, we're going to start from the outside edge and we are going to just dampen it. I used a little too much water the last time. You want the surface a little bit damp. It'll help you move the paint, but I really don't want it puddled. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to pull that paint in towards the growth. This is the growth point right here. That's the center right there. So all my strokes are being pulled towards that center. All right. Come up. And I haven't done this yet, so this is a, we're building it as we go. I'm working through the palette as we go. I've done the palette before. I made a couple of changes this time around on the palette. One of my favorite colors is getting harder and harder to come by in all the avenues of paint. Uh, that was a little dark. That's all right. We're just going to soften it up. Soften it up. There we go. See? And it works. There we go. And I'm just going to come in like this and outside edge towards the center, towards the growth. There's the growth. And as much as these move like watercolor, they're not watercolor, they're permanent. Once you dry them with the dryer, once they dry, they're done. You're not going to be able to move the pigment that's down there. You can. Um, I don't worry about holding on to the white of my paper in this because it is fluid acrylics, which means that I have white paint that I'll use. And in, a, in watercolors now, they do um, have whites. It just doesn't uh, have quite uh, the same feel to it as holding on to the white of your papers. But the, even though this is a watercolor technique, we're using acrylics, I am going to use white at the very end for my highest highlights. 
And even though they, I'm using all the same pigment right now, I'm painting each petal individually and holding on to the petal. All right, and we're going to come in here, and this is the last petal. The next color I'm going to put out is going to be Naphthal Light. Naphthal Red Light. Okay. And we're going to start from the inside. On the Naphthal Light, we do have one more shade color that we're going to do, but it's more, it's a darker color. We're going up in value. All right. We're going up in value. No, we're not. We're going down in value. It's darker. Up, down. Okay. And we're going to be a little more conscientious and see how it's nice and streaky. That's a good thing because that's going to help create the texture of the petal. All right. The texture of the petal is not a solid petal. It's got texture into it. All right. And you want to hold on to that texture. All right. But now, I'm going to tell you something. The darks make the lights lighter. This is one little tidbit of information where you might say, what? <laughs> the darks make the lights lighter. The lights make the darks darker. So if your darks aren't dark enough, chances are the problem, and you're at an intense, tense dark, chances are your lights aren't light enough. And you want to remember that as you're building a painting, that um, you're not going to get to the place where you're going to be until you get all your lights and darks in as far as complete form. And you're trying to build form so the piece has flowing to it, and you're going to create that through the intensity of the pigments that you use. Um, but you also want to create texture. And this is coming out very streaky at this point, and that's a good thing because that's helping to create the texture of the petal, okay? Some of the things that I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you so many times, you're going to be sick of listening to it, but I'm going to tell you anyways, again, the pigment is going to go where the water is. So if there's water, the pigment is going to flow to it. And you want to remember that when you're using this kind of technique. It's got a lot of water in it. Now see, this went off kilter here. Okay, the, the center of the flower is right here. So I want to soften that pull out so that it keeps pulling to the center of the flower. Okay. And we're going to go around. Yeah. There we go. And I keep a line drawing, my line drawing handy. I always, uh, you know, I know that um, when I'm just messing around, sometimes I don't. But um, when I'm doing a painting, especially one that has form, I always create a line drawing. Okay? There's a line drawing that I created, okay, for this flower. So I always create a line drawing that is not just on the piece. Um, sometimes I work out the line drawing on paper, on drawing paper, and I will draw it three or four times before I'm sure that that's what I want to do. But I always have a line drawing that I refer to as I'm going. I'm still pulling towards this is the center. I know it's off center. I'm a little off center too, you know, which is good for me. All right. And pull towards the center. Right there. That's the center. Okay. 
And then we're going to soften out this edge. We don't want this to dry like this. We want it to have a nice soft transition. Yes, I like soft transitions of color. I didn't soften that out quite as much as I wanted to. So I'm going back in and I'm going to soften it out again. All right. And there we go. All right. So I'm pulling from the outside edge in. I am considering these darks. Softening it out. Center is lighter. Center is lighter by pigment, not by form. Okay. Um, the color of the center of the poppy is yellow. All right. Then we're going to do this again on the outside edge. Oh, no, we have a few of them to do. It's all right. Here we go. Outside edge. And this brush is wonderful. It comes to a really nice point. I do have the brushes on my website. Here we go. Get off there. There we go. Remember, we're trying to also, at this stage, we're trying to also create texture. Yep, you got to see what I'm doing. Okay, we're trying to create texture. We're trying to create form. We're trying to create the different tones the flower. And even though we're texturizing it and it's not solid, it's not a solid base coat. All right. We're still creating form too. And if you look closely, you can see the individual petals. Okay. And I gotta kind of solve this shadowing thing. I thought I had it down. All right. This is not going towards the form, but we're gonna pull adjust it afterwards because this is a direct line. All right. Oh. Soften that out. And like I said, it will, this will be on the Facebook page indefinitely. You can just Type in the videos, you can click on the videos and it'll bring up all the videos. There's been a few of them that are really great. Um, I also, in April, will be teaching at, um, in Cal for a California chapter on Zoom. So you can sign up through I should really post all of that on my website. Okay. This is a little skinny part right in here. And there's still time to sign up for the rose class that I'm teaching uh, in February. 
Oh, it's not February 1st. Creative Innovations is not February 1st, 4th, it's February 9th. Sorry about that. And it's a sweet bluebird and the class is free. And it's Thursday night. Sorry about that, Carolyn. Louise Long. Loose for me is holding that brush on the very end of the handle. Yep, you want to hold it on the very end of the handle. Not the very end, but close to the end. That's Julia from Colorado. She comes to net to paint with us at net. There we go. All right. First layer is on. Second layer is on. What I am going to do, because I want to, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to intensify this yellow, okay? Just like that, only I'm not going to put any water on it because I want to keep it intense. I don't want it diluted, okay? And I'm tap, tap, tapping it, and that's how I'm getting, I'm trans able to transition it. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put out one of my favorite colors that's becoming very, very hard to get. All right, and it's uh, quinacrinons. The quinacrinons are getting very hard to get. This is quinacrinon gold. And what we're going to do here is we are going to bring in some really dark areas. This is acrylic. We're going to be able... Oh... I don't know that I want to use that. We can use that. I want to show it to you though. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to it because it's a little too brown for me. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to add some red to it. All right, add some more quinacridone. The color that I use a tremendous amount of is quinacridone burnt orange and that is very close to it right there. There we go. All right, so I added some red to that quinacrin on gold. I picked up the wrong color. I can't easily find my hand, put my little fingers on the right one. So I mixed it. Okay, so now we're gonna put in some real darks, okay? All right, and right in here, this petal, Okay, this is a little bit carefuler of approach. Okay, this color right here, this area right in here, I want this to be very dark. All right. Even if I choose to brighten it up with some more red, that darkness isn't going to go away. I don't want a hard line as it's going to transition, so I cleaned off my brush and I'm just going to soften it out. Okay, there we go. Then I want to bring some up here. Up here, I want this to turn in. So I'm going to soften in some dark right up in there. And I'm going to turn that, soften it out. All right. 
And then this back pedal, I'm going to mix some more of this up. This back pedal is very dark. It's very in the back. We don't want it to be important. We're going to push it back all the way back. Okay. There we go. All right. We're rocking and rolling here. Then this area right in here, we're going to get this area to roll just a little bit. So how we're going to do that is very carefully, not a lot of water. We're going to put this dark in like this. And we're going to put this, pull it up towards. Here we go. Linda Martin is a California chair. Um, we're painting a rose in April. All right. I am going to come around here on here. And I'm going to shade in. My separation. There we go. This area up in here also gets a dark. We're going to add some pigment right in here, and that's going to intensify that, pushing this and bringing it, putting that in shadow and pushing that back. All right. I'm going to soften this out. And I'm going to put some red right in here. When this dries, this one will be a little bit darker. Here we go. This is red that's on my brush that I'm reinforcing this with. And then I'm going to bring in some yellow out here and some orange. And I'm going to soften this in. A little bit of yellow right in here. And then some red. There we go. This is the quinacridone non gold mix because I want to separate that. And I'm going to soften that out. Remember, I want the I want the flow to go towards the center, towards the center of the growth. Okay. 
There we go. Nope. Gotta be able to see it. There we go. Soften it out. There we go. Look at that. Is that pretty or what? I need some more naphthol red. There's a few areas that aren't red enough. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that winter, you know, the dryness of winter. Oh, I can't wait for spring. There we go. And it is beauteous. I'm going to soften this out. And out in here, we talked about this earlier, even though I'm putting red over this, that dark isn't going to go away. It maintains its darkness. We're just altering the tone a little bit. And remember what I said, I'm not just building a, a petal, I'm not just building form, I'm also building texture. There we go. All right, and then this is going to have some intense yellow. All right, the center of it we're going to build now, and we're going to put in straight yellow, okay, into the center. I held on to the white of the paper. If you don't hold on to the white of the paper, that's all right. All you have to do is go in with white paint, and you'll be fine. On these outside edges, I'm going to bring in some yellow. And here and there, I'm going to pull down. All right. I'm going to bring in some warm white now for some real high highlights. I have to tell you something. This sometimes it just looks, mm, you know, a little boring until you get some of these final details in. All right. And this one is looking a little boring right at the moment. We're going to bring in some intense yellow out in here. And out in here, okay? So on the whites, there's a few areas that we're going to put in some whites to bring in some highlights. And yes, this wet, this yellow is still wet. All right, I'm going to intensify this dark right in here. All right, it's not intense enough. Let it soften out on its own. I gave it a little help. 
I'm going to intensify some of this dark in here. bit in here. There we go. And that's pretty. It's pretty. Now we're going to do something wild. Okay, if I can find it. Carbon black. I do have to do a little bit of work to the center just so we all know it's a poppy. I think I'll go with a smaller liner to do this. There. And we're just going to put in a few little lines like that, like that, like that, like that. There we go. We're going to make it all work. We are going to connect them into the center. There we go. There. Okay. You kind of want to have that done before you go into the black. All right. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to keep going. Okay. But we're going to put the black in because the black is going to make a difference. You know, I told you earlier, the whites make the darks darker and the darks make the light, the darks make the lights lighter. This black is going to make, and this black is not, a, uh, this black is part of the flower. It's not part of the form. It's not a dark for the form. It's going to affect the other colors, though, as we build it, okay? It is going to affect the other colors and how they appear. The, the darks are going to, this is a real dark, so the lights are going to appear lighter after this goes in. Um, so it's time that it has to go in now. There. Here we go. Look at that. Now we need to let that dry. You don't want this black to bleed into the flower. Um, because it'll kill it. We don't want to kill it. There we go. All right, I am going to dry that. I am not going to take a chance that I make a mess. I'm going to dry that. Linda Johnson from Colbrook, Connecticut. How are you today? And Maggie Bolger Verdi. I know I, I make it look easy, but you know, I'm a little stressed about this one because I hadn't done a, a sample on it before I started. <laughs> but I think it's good. I think we're moving right along here. Um, there we go. Uh, I'm going to add some more lights and some more darks, okay? I do think it's time that I put in some greens because that's going to also make a difference in the relationship of the flowers. The relationship, no, the relationship of the colors, okay? So I'm going to go back in with my brush. Excuse me. And where's my line drawing? Yes, nope, wrong one. Yeah, I drew one and I didn't like it, so I have to redraw it. There it is. There's my line drawing, so it's right here. I can't really see it anymore. So we're going to go in with green gold. And we're not going to fret about this. We are... I'm just going to put it in. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Now listen, the base of the stem can't be thinner than the top of the stem because it'd fall over. You got to remember that when you paint trees. We painted trees on Tuesday, Monday. 
and I had to remind everybody of that, the base of the tree can't be thinner than the top of the tree. It'd fall right over. Now we're going to do something a little strange here. All right, we're going to push our brush down. No, you need to see it. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to bring it up and push and push and push and pull it off. All right, and then we're going to put in a couple of those. There we go. And I'm going to pull this one from over here. There we go. These are a little straight. I'm going to connect this all at the bottom because it will look better. All right. Then I'm going to go into some thalo green yellow and I'm going to try this out on my palette first. And I'm going to mix it, okay? There's too much blue in there. So I'm going to take the thalo green yellow and I'm going to mix some green gold into it. And the colors are going to get happy together. And then we're going to just put in a few little darks. And I think we'll go down the right side. We're going to skip some darks into the grasses. And we don't have to worry. Okay, no need to worry. We're painting. We're having fun. Need a little water in there. Soften it out. The phthalos are very, very bright, intense colors. And there's a lot of blue to the phthalos. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. Complementary colors make beautiful darks. Red and green are complements. All right. So I'm going to do something that's going to make you crazy. But it's good. Trust me. I'm going to take some of this burnt orange and I'm going to make a dark with it. I added some dark burnt orange to my green and I'm going to put it right under it. And yes, it turns it brown. But it's a beautiful shade. There we go. We'll let that dry out a little bit. And then we're going to go back in with some straight green gold and give it a little touch of highlight. Oh, we have some handsy yellow right here. All right. Okay, 
Now, I am going to put in a few more highlights. This one in particular, I want to have some light in. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to add a little warm white. Or you can add titanium white. There, okay. And I'm streaking this in. Remember, I'm not only just creating form, I'm also creating texture. And I'm doing it only on this side. Now, say the, what, the yellow gets too washed out because of the white. Just go over it with straight hands of yellow, and it'll be fine. All right. Uh, okay, the other thing is, is I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brush. There we go. That's also helping to create the form. Hansy Yellow is a transparent color. So if you want it to become opaque, you add a touch of white to it. If the white gets chalky, which happens, okay, if the white gets too chalky, You just let it dry and add some Hansy Yellow over the white, the area that's too chalky. It'll brighten it right up. All right. This is in shadow. I don't want to get too light over there. I also don't want this one to be as light as this one. I want to keep it dark. It's underneath. Okay. This is a uh, naphtha red is going to go in here. There we go. I'm kind of liking it. Oh, I gotta clean my brush off here. Okay, I'm gonna bring in some yellow into here. All right, and then I'm gonna bring in some naphthol red in between. Now, that is very stripey looking. See that? Not to worry, I'm just going to soften it out so I loosen up so that those stripes, okay? As much as we want texture, we don't want it to be stripey. And that is pretty good. I'm going to add some more yellow back in here, just a little bit, so that I can get some texture back in there. Add a little bit of my burnt gold mix. There we go. And I could just play with this for a long, long time, but I think that we are going to be done. One thing that's bothering me a little tiny bit is this leaf right here. It really is a little too flat for my liking. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to bring in some yellow. No, nope, that's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and really make a repair on this. I'm going to bring in some white back in here. All right, and that way I can move the color in. Okay. So I'm just going to bring in some white, and now it's not going to stay white because it is in shadow. But I got it light enough so that I can bring in some yellow and build a little bit more red into there. All right, now. There we go. Much better. Yep. 
think I'll make that turn. Okay, by putting a highlight down to the middle of this petal, it's going to make the petal turn. So it bends just a little tiny bit. There we go. And then this right in here. It's going to have some yellow so it stays on top. Soften it in. A little more yellow. I think next week We'll paint the sea. I think that'll be a good thing to paint is the sea. We won't focus on the sky. We're going to paint the sea. A little bit of red that we're going to add to this. There. Soften it in. There we go. Is that pretty? Oh, oh, I forgot one thing. The center is like a mess. I need to just do a little work on the center. Yes, we do. We need to bring in some reds. Soften it in. I need to dry that. I'm going to bring in a little tiny bit and I'm not going to do it with that. Where did it go? Where did my mark? I'm going to bring in a liner brush. And we're going to just go like this. This is warm white. All right. Warm white is really part of the traditions line. There. And some highlights. But now that center has a little bit of form. See that? See the streakiness and the textures? There. Okay, that's going to do it for today. Hi, Louise Long and Linda Johnson. Okay, and I want to thank you all for stopping by. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll leave it up for a while. All right. I'll leave it up indefinitely. These are media fluid acrylics that I painted with today. All right. Have a great, great weekend. Uh.